A few hours ago, OpenAI released their open source model, GPT OSS. Not really open source, open ways, but we're not going to argue about that. So in this video, I'm going to briefly talk about the model, share my experience about running it locally on my Mac and getting it to run with MCV servers, why I switched from Olama to LM Studio, how to set it up, and some things you should know if you're going to try and get it running locally on your computer. And while this is not GPT-5, what's really great about it is that we can run these for free locally on our computers without internet with MCB servers. And for me, one of the things that keeps drawing me back to Claude is its ability to work with MCB servers, Notion, Gmail, right data, memory, and more. And these are heavily embedded into my personal productivity workflow. So what's great about GPT OSS is that since you're able to run it on your own computer and it's free, you're not going to hit rate limits. Now, let's just be clear right off the bat. This is not the same thing as GPT-40 or Claude Sauna. This is a smaller open source model that you're running locally, which means you're not going to get the same performance. You don't have the same computing power. But my point is if we're able to offload our mundane or smaller tasks to a model like this, where we don't have to worry about usage, we can save and not rely on Claude, for example, to use MCB servers for simple things like updating our Notion, so that's the immediate use case I see for using GPT OSS. And I've actually been playing with it for the last few hours. So I'm just going to share with you my insights and how I set it up. I'm running this on a MacBook Pro M4 with 36 gigabytes of unified memory. OpenAI claims that you could run the 120 billion parameter model on a computer that has 80 gigabytes of unified memory, but the 20 billion parameter model only requires 16 gigabytes. And we're not talking about storage, we're talking about memory. That being said, if you have a bit more than 16 gigabytes, it doesn't mean you'll be able to run this model to its full potential because there are limitations here. What we're talking about here is the context window. But now we're not talking about the context window that the model itself supports. We're talking about the context window that your computer will support. And what we're getting at is your computer could hold the model, but it also has to fit the context window into there. So it all has to fit into memory. And that's where we start seeing the limitations. And as we know, even when we're running closed source models somewhere else on someone else's inference, we see how fast the context window fills up especially when you add more tools. And we're not even talking about using the tools. We're talking about the tools being enabled. The descriptions and everything is added into the context window itself from the beginning of a chat. And when you use tool calls, it uses up even more tokens from your context window. And if you've been using open source models, especially with tools, you know what I'm getting at. Now, there are two main ways that I run open source models on my Mac, and that is either via Olama or LM Studio. Essentially, what you do is you download a software, that could then download and serve those models to you via various user interfaces like Olama itself, the terminal, Goose, continue.dev, anything LLM, LM Studio, and plenty more. What I've been doing for the last two years is using Olama. And I actually started using GPT OSS via Olama. But once I wanted to start playing dynamically with the context window and also add MCB servers into the mix, I decided to move to LM Studio. So we're going to cover LM Studio in this video. And the same principles still apply to Olama. And this video is not sponsored by LM Studio or anything. LM Studio, Olama, Goose, and all these other tools are all free to use. So OpenAI is hosting their models on multiple places like Olama, like Hugging Face. So to get started, you go to lmstudio.ai, just download the software, install it, and run it on your computer. And again, what's great about open source models is that you're able to run them free locally on your computer. You don't need an internet connection. Your data is not being sent anywhere else unless you want it to be. Now, once you're in LM Studio, press the Discover tab and you can search for a bunch of different models. GPT OSS is the top model I see right now. There's tons of different models here. And by the way, you could also search for different variants of models. I'm going with the top one. That's what I've been using for the last few hours. Now, once you have the model downloaded, you go up here to select the model size. And I suggest toggling on manually choose model load parameters. And you might not know this, but by default, Olama sets the context window for each model to 2000 tokens. And you can change this via the terminal. LM Studio sets the context window to 4000 tokens. And it's up to us to find the suitable size based on our computer. And I think because we want to use MCB servers, dynamically change the context window for the model based on our computer size, all within one platform, while still getting to know this new model, GPT OSS. LM Studio is the best platform. I'll just point out a few other things I like about LM Studio. You could see the token count. When the model is loaded, you see your remaining context window. You're able to install at MCP servers the standard mcp.json way by copying the same config you have in almost every other MCP supported client. And then once you have your MCP servers installed, you can easily toggle on which tools you need and don't need. So for example, these are the four main MCP servers I'll install on any new client just to test it out. And that's basic memory, bright data, context seven, and sequential thinking. 
And Bright Data, for example, is a very powerful MCB server with all these abilities, but I don't need all the tools. So I like how easy and convenient it is to not only toggle on and off the MCB servers, but toggle on and off each individual tool. Now, when we load up GPT OSS, the 20 billion parameter model, the first thing you'll notice was we have this new toggle here, reasoning effort. And you can choose if you want to reason with low, medium, or high effort. But now, if you see down here, we see how much of the context window is full. Now remember, we set this up as a four thousand token context window. That is tiny compared to what we're used to. So if I just say, hey, tell me about yourself. And remember, we're in a low reasoning effort. It already filled up 11% of the context window. One prompt, a little bit of thinking, and it's response. If we were to start a new chat, and let's say we wanted to use Bright Data to say something like, use the Bright Data MCB to tell me about what's on the front page of Judge Report, what's the main headline? 0% context is full, we're gonna send this off. So we see from a single thought, the context window is already 74% full, that's crazy. And now what's happening is, it's going through this loop. You'll see it's going to continue making tool calls. If I stop it now, because you'll see it's still running, says 74%. It updated itself. Now it's 1,434.8% full. It blew through the context window. And what happened here is it just went on this failure loop. It didn't even understand what was happening. So what I'm trying to get to here is the importance of mitigating the context window. You see how much tool call actually eats into the context window. You see how small 4,000 token context window is. And by the way, I'm sure this will be optimized in the near future, but don't worry because we can modify the size of the context window. So I stopped the model and now I'm gonna change the model parameters. And because I played with it for a bit, I know that my computer can comfortably run at 32,000 tokens. So I just changed the context lane here. I'm gonna press load model. Now we see that it's running at 32,000 tokens. So now let's run the same prompt. Use the Bright Data MCP to tell me about what's on the front page of Judge Report. What's the main headline? So it just finished. And as we see here, the context is now 29% full. That was one tool call. And let's just check if that's correct. Whoa. But yeah, that's the correct headline. So we see the MCP is running. And I just wanted to show you how single MCP calls will eat into the context window. So the moral of the story is we're able to run this local, free, private model on our computer. And as great as that is, you have to take into consideration that this experience will be different than running the closed source frontier models online. You're gonna to have to readjust the way you use context. You're gonna to have to readjust the way you use MCPs and you're gonna to have to learn the boundaries of your computer. And I'm sure by the way that this is continuously gonna be optimized. I personally really like running open source or open weights models. I like the ability to be able to use LLMs when I'm not connected to the internet or when I'm using personal information. It's not the same as using the best models but I think it's pretty cool to have it running locally on my computer. The way I see it moving forward is to be able to offload a lot of my Claude MCP tasks to this model and save my Claude usage for my more intense tasks. Not that we have any transparency on the real Claude usage limits. By the way, OpenAI also put up a challenge to jailbreak or red team the model. They want people to test it and see if they're able to push it beyond its safety guardrails. And I'll say that in my testing, I found that this model is actually quite prude. Unlike all the other models where I'm able to run generic MCP tools, this model is refusing to use some tools and saying it's against its safety protocols just when I'm using the web search. So I'm finding it pretty interesting to see its guardrails compared to some of the other open source models and some of the frontier models. So yeah, I'm going to keep playing with it. I think the best way of using and testing this open source model with MCP servers is LM Studio. Your main task is just to figure out what model and what context window you could run on your computer. And just use AI search, put in all the specifications of your computer, put in the model you're trying to run, and you'll be able to figure it out with a bit of trial and error. So I hope you found this video insightful or you learned something. If you have any feedback, drop it in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.